Father who art in heaven. Please give me sound mind and judgment to speak to America and to speak to our future, which is our children. I hope this message serves your will, not mine. As I speak to America, and I speak for the future of the Virginia. Amen. Amen. This message is from, of course, the heart and soul. I am the 2021 candidate for governor of Virginia, and I am running for the Republican nomination. Throughout America and throughout our great history, we have had our ups and our downs with how we treat each other, how we live our life, and what we do to contribute to a better America. When we are born into this world, we are all faced with that same duty to make sure we bring a light to the darkness each time frame we open our eyes to say that we will always be Americans. We will always love each other as Americans and we will get through all things through God's grace as Americans. I am troubled by far with what's going on with our youth here in America, especially here in Virginia, where those are supposed to be getting educated, living life with the experience of the guarantees and rights and freedoms that we all have fought for. And to also know that leadership in America is still alive and well and strong to keep them all on track to whatever success that they choose to have. But I worry more each day as I look at the streets across America and the cities that used to once be so beautiful, full of life, now it's full of decomposition and decay. We understand that you feel that you speak for so many others around this world by the activities that you feel brings you change. But some activities ain't good change. It's actually what will call for your death if you don't change. We have strived and worked too hard as Americans for a better life and future for our children. And we know today doesn't represent that. It represents America that's angry and fed up with career politicians and those who don't care nothing about their welfare. And y'all learning it a lot sooner than later, a lot faster than us can prepare for. But we know we didn't raise dumb children. We raised the brightest, the smartest, and the most successful children ever to have a future that comes without limits. But we don't want you to create your own limitation. We cannot say we know the answer to everything that's going on. Nobody does. But together we can come up with solutions that once before was long denied by the lack of those who cared to provide the information and those 
who lack the will to obtain it. We get nowhere in this road of life by putting death traps to our own community and to our fellow brothers and sisters and neighbors. This is not what we live for, for you to die suddenly before God gives you that great gift that you was meant to give to the world. I'm not going to cater into the destruction of our future. That's for other political parties to do. Not for Merle Rutledge and not for the America I know we all want. And we want our America that's free for you to get an education and to get every opportunity that you work hard for. We want America for you to be safe walking out your door and on the streets and going to whatever destination that you decide safely, secure, and not worried about those who will cause you harm. We want our America that we know when we get old and we have to live this, leave this great nation. We know we left behind an America that will always take care of family and family will always take care of America. But we can't do that right now. Too much pain and hurt and anger. But also with that came good faith and then those with righteousness. But what followed was always the devil. And that puts a hold on our dream. A dream that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had for this great nation. A dream where we all come together. We work together. We no longer look at each other's race, but we look at the character of each other. Where we build and are colorblind to whoever finishes the job, but we instill in each other that we all took part in the great work of making America great again. See, we don't want to not fulfill Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream because God created him just like so many others who have been in your life and only want to see the best in you. See, the best in you that changes the world to form a more perfect union. A dream to do it peacefully and civilly. We have seen death of our fellow patriots and brothers and sisters through wars. Now we want to make change without having to fire a bullet. That's the same change we want for each and every one of you. Because not only do I speak as a candidate for governor of Virginia, but I also speak as another parent, another father in households who don't have one. And for those in households that do, that still look up and respect the office that we hold because we no longer have the corruption which all held us back. That's what we have going on right now, a corruption that has spread down into our children's minds. How they have seen greed, the love of money over people, no longer the representation of the people but representations of those who give them fancy watches, fancy gifts, money that they don't need, temptation of the flesh that they don't have, and the will to want to change even a sunflower until a rose that only shows thorns. 
is pinching each and every person in America and its future, which includes Black America, White America, Hispanic America, America of all walks of life and all backgrounds and ethnicities. We are all faced with the problems that come with that. But we have opportunity to fix and do right by you, but you must do right by us. Because it ain't Democrats versus Republicans. It's the people versus the politicians. That's what's going on across America. That's why you're not in school getting the education. That's why you're not playing with your friends. That's why you're not involved in the sports and competitions that showed your ability and how far you have come. We have no right to take that away from you as it was guaranteed to us, nor do we have a right to be silent and not speak up for you when you have been speaking up louder uh, than measure. There are a lot of cowards that taught the good game and you lost faith, you lost hope. Because what you saw in them was different than what they saw in themselves. You saw leaders like Obama. You saw leaders like Bill Clinton. You saw leaders like George Bush. You saw the worst when it came down to your dreams becoming your nightmares. And it's a time for America to change that. Because we told you what to believe. We told you what was the standards. We told you what we should all expect of each other, but we haven't lived that out that well, have we? As scandal after scandal, corruption after corruption. You see the very ones that you have been taught that they couldn't be corrupt. Now you're finding out the answer that wasn't taught to you in those school books. You can still see the devil just like any of God's children can still see the devil. And it can still smile at you in the fancy suit. But I'm going to hold clear that I'm going to keep my promise to America and to Virginia's future. That I will end the corruption. I will bring back representation for the people. And my guarantee is that those leaders that you used to believe represented public service as protecting and serving the people. You gonna know that that dream has been found and awoken to. We just, you deserve that. Yes, you do. So if I have to raise hell, if I have to fight, if I have to put my life on the line to make sure America has the future that it has guaranteed to on paper, that's exactly what I will do. Because they lost sight of you. They lost sight of what it means for family and how much it means to be that father looking into their daughter's eyes and letting them know you can be everything that you want to be. That mother and father looking into their son's eyes saying you are going to be the best husband, the best father, the best leader, the best mentor that you can possibly be and carry on the family name 
and the family promise and the family history. Just like your parents and father and mother would want you to be and do. So that's my message. Because Obama, and I'm going to bring him up because a lot of people had hope. I'm going to bring up Senator Louise Lucas because a lot of people felt that she represented change. To both of you, you missed the opportunity and failed America and failed in your duty and your sworn oath to protect America and protect your constituents and be the representation that they needed you to be. Your job to America and your duty to America doesn't leave you when you leave out of office or when you decide to retire or whenever you feel it's convenient. What you represent was the loudest microphone to carry on good faith, community service, love of your country, love of your brother and sister, and to make sure that you follow the laws that you would expect any other American to follow. And you chose not to do that. Instead, you promoted and incited the destruction of our community in our great cities and put in play words of power that misled millions of youth that could have had the opportunity to show change through peaceful protests, not through crime and rioting. Obama, you claimed you was going to help solve problems in office before, during, and after. Instead, you have been nothing more than a problem, than a speaker of hope that you claimed. You for cost America Families across America depended on you showing what you said in your words through action, showing fearlessness, getting the corruption out of Washington, D.C., speaking for the people, and doing everything that you can do to make all lives better. You didn't do that. You gave up everything you stood for. The moment you called peaceful protests and called for more people to be uncomfortable. But the politicians and the American people are still not comfortable. They are afraid and scared that leaders like you will continue to use your words that you said was for love to spread hate. Without teaching and acknowledging and telling those who protest the correct manner of protest, the right way of civil disobedience, the right way to get your message across without violence. You chose not to go that far. You chose instead to allow our youth to be put in harm's way, put in death traps, because you did not care about your future. You cared more about the DNC and what politicians wanted you to do instead of doing what you knew was right. 
a leader would have told the rioters and those protesting that violence is never acceptable. Crime is still crime. Injustice is still an injustice. That doesn't give you an excuse or a reason to be the perpetrators of the very acts that go against your cause. And to go home, take care of your family, and teach your family that America is not perfect, but we owe a duty to do the right thing for America and fix the problems working together because the riots has only separated and divided us. It has divided us further and further away from these children's minds. Instead, they go to the streets. They go to others that don't care about them to be the mentors and teachers that we as Americans should be. That's what's causing the havoc all across this nation. And I expect better for all families and all of our children. That's exactly the type of message you should have gave out. But instead, you chose not to talk about not being violent. You chose not to talk about civil disobedience. You chose not to talk about how great America is because you were supposed to be the representation that America is for every American, but instead you showed us that politicians are still politicians and they don't care about America and you became the portrait of it. That's what hurts our youth the most. That's what hurts Americans that voted for the Democratic Party the most. To know that you don't care about our children. Because anybody seeing the scenes across America would have never put their children in that type of danger. Nor would they encourage it, nor would they condone it, nor would they stand silent to it. And you have. But you managed to show up for Biden. That's because you're showing up for a politician. And to Senator Louise Lucas, you have had an amazing career. You have accomplished goals. And you have served your Portsmouth community with honor all the way up until this year. I expected you to take responsibility and accountability for your actions setting the precedence for our youth to know what is acceptable behavior and what is unacceptable behavior. That did not happen as our youth saw that crime should have an unusual punishment for politicians. And for those who looked up to you, all those children who have been told by their parents that you are the representation of Virginia leadership and what hard work and dedication would get you. By fulfilling a dream that you had and now you are living it. Our children deserve no less, nor should they be put in situations which defer that dream. A leader will take ownership of their actions because we all can make mistakes. But there's a difference between mistakes and when you intentionally continue to cause havoc, a mischaracterization of the events, the defamation 
of other people's characters that told the truth. And instead of encourage the fact that you lied, you defamed, you committed a crime and you should be held accountable and responsible for it. You hurt Portsmouth, Virginia and its youth and those leaders that was young that had a bright future. They are charged with a felony and you're still acting with so much selfishness. And you, then you bring other politicians into the fold so our youth can say destroying other people's property, being a leader and misleading people to believe that they can tear up property because of who I am. And then to say after it's all said and done, lie about those who's telling the truth and still believe that you're innocent and will be vindicated. That's the ultimate smack in the face for all you that are watching this. And then seeing a police chief, Angela Green, be punished, persecuted for doing the right thing, exactly what we as Americans believe that the police stand for, that nobody is above the law, Nobody is better than anybody. But obviously that's exactly the message that you gave out on how you handle the aftermath of this all. A true leader, Virginia Senator Louise Lucas, will own up to their part in this and apologize to the citizens of Portsmouth and to all the children that looked up to you in regards to how you handled this mess. We are not spoiled brats. We are the adults and we are supposed to set the example. You missed that point and you showed us why Richmond is so corrupt, why the swamp is so dirty. And you had every opportunity to show Virginia, show your district that there is change in Richmond, change in Portsmouth that takes on responsibility and doesn't pass the buck that's in it for the long run, not for the short run. And being there for a time of crisis where people need leadership the most. And where everybody's watching and trying to find out what their future is going to be because you speak about it from a position of making decisions. When you tell our youth to commit crime, to misuse their public office if they ever elected, to lie and to cheat and to bully for wrong. Y'all was wrong, period. The side shows and having Fairfax, Heron, Migolov, this is the message that you are sending to our children? You wonder why they are out of control? Y'all are supposed to be setting the example. You have parents. When you grew up, you think you could go in your house and order people into your house and destroy your property? And then at the same time, Frank, tell your parents, I'm still not wrong because of 
who I am. We got to start practicing what we preach as leaders. That's what I youth to sing right now. These are adults in the room. These are adults acting like this. That's why we have this swamp right now. Because we don't have adults being lawmakers. Adults making decisions. Adults being accountable and setting the example. It's them. And what we see, America, how it's burning, how things is going on right now. The adults are holding their children tightly because they're scared to have them go outside because of your type of leadership. It's time. It's time to stop kidding around. What we got going on right now is destroying people's lives at record numbers and their families. The corruption got to come to an end. It does. And I'm just fearless. I'm, I'm fighting for our children. That's what I'm fighting for. They deserve a future. They deserve to go outside and play and not have to worry about being harassed, intimidated. They deserve to be able to go to a park or a family event without people coming around trying to harm them. Imagine our future if we continue in this direction. You won't have to speak about the black community, white community, Hispanic community killing each other. We doing that right now. And our children are going to be the ones to catch the strays because of irresponsible leadership. It's time for all of y'all to own up. It's time for you to do something finally for the people because you spent more time doing it for everybody else. We go out of the fight for America. And that's exactly what the Democratic Party has done to America. Hold your kids tightly. Always say that you love them. Always say that you love your family. Let them know they are going to be great and they are going to have a future free from all the social injustices, free from all of this madness that's going on across this country. Because it's our time to stand up and show America we lead. So this is Merle Rutledge, 2021 candidate for governor of Virginia, speaking from the heart and soul. That I love America. I love all of our children. And I'm going to protect them with my life. That's exactly why I should become the next governor. That's exactly why you should support my campaign. Yes, I give our message very harsh and strong. It may make you angry, but I want to make sure you're listening. But it all comes from love because of course then you start understanding that my message is about making sure things like this doesn't happen. But I got to give out what is real about what's going on. So I want you to join my team. I want you to help in any kind of way to my campaign. Because I want America back, but I want it great. And the president shares in that train. And he's making it happen. I share in the same dream. And both look at it through God's will. 
up, somebody got to step up. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm speaking from the heart, speaking from the soul, and speaking for our children's future. Because when our children is happy, when our children is becoming successful, that's the gift as parents we all want to have to give to them. God bless you, and God bless America.